Welcome to Dude RV. Hey, I sure appreciate you stopping by. Find myself at Lake Powhatan Campground. I sure appreciate you stopping by. If this is your first visit, I'd be honored if you'd consider clicking on the subscribe button. I'm wandering around creating videos about places where you can take your RV. Unique places to camp on in public campgrounds in your RV. And I have traveled to the east from RV home base and I find myself at Lake Powhatan Campground in the Pisgah National Forest. This is North Carolina. It's a very interesting ecosystem in that we're on the eastern side of the Appalachian Mountains. Uh, it's very temperate. I mean, it was 60 degrees this morning. Yesterday it was about 91 degrees in the afternoon and it's kind of damp. We've got a 78% chance of rain today, but I've got a break there's sun shining and normally I'd be doing this kind of video on my little red high-speed mobility scooter but little red is quite dead and I'm not exactly sure what it's gonna take to revive little red so and, and I'm halfway into this trip I'm a, I'm a thousand miles from my tools anyway I've come up with an alternative solution I've got white lightning, the white Ford truck. And, and a year, several years ago, I used this uh, to do a driving tour, this mount. I forget what it's called, Xerxes tripod, a Xerxes tripod. Bought it on Amazon. I'll go, it's in my Amazon affiliate page. The link's down in the description below. Xerxes with an X. And it's got the suction cup feet, it's got rubber feet, it's got, it's a very handy little tool. But I'm going to take the GoPro Hero 9 with the Max Lens Mod, and I'm going to put it on that Xerxes mount. And we're going to take a little ride through Lake Powhatan Campground. We're going to make right turns only, and we'll end up back at camp. So let's go see Lake Powhatan Campground, Pisgah National Forest. Well, alrighty then. All right, all right, all right. I have got the GoPro Hero 9 mounted on the hood mount. So cue the music. Now Lake Powhatan, Hatan, it's not just a real big campground. It's, it's rather small to be quite honest. It's, there's quite a few campsites, but there's not a whole lot going on as far as, you know, there's a, there's a, a swim beach and there's a fishing dock on the small lake. And that's, that's about it. If you're a cyclist and you're into mountain biking, this is, this, this place has got more bike trails than you can shake a stick at. There is, and it's also bear country. So if you're camping here, you wanna make sure that you are bear aware, keep your food in a good place where bears can't get to it. Now, last night, as I mentioned in the intro, the, when I got up this morning, the temperature was 60 degrees. There's not a whole lot of wind blowing in this campground because we're deep in the forest. We're down in a, in a holler. 
down in the holler. There are actually four camping loops. Well, maybe five if you count the lodging. I'm not exactly sure how they have them identified. You'll see them when we get up here. They're really neat, they're tents. Now, normally, if you're new to the, to, to, if you're new to the channel, I typically do these on my high-speed mobility scooter, which gives me some, some leeway, and I'm able to go against the one-way signs so you can actually see into the campsite. Unfortunately, I'm not able to give you that kind of perspective in the white truck. So I'm going to drive relatively slow. Of course, I can't go very fast in the white truck here anyway. Speed limit is 10 miles an hour. But with the Max Lens Mod, hopefully that will give you enough perspective to, to help in your sight selection. You can pause the video. 60 is a long flat sight, just saying. Now, not all of these sites have electricity and water. Some of the sites in this loop do have electricity and there's community water by the road. But most of these are primitive tent camping sites. And most of these sites in this loop are smaller, designed for smaller trailers or vans or bees or tents. When I book my reservations, you know, recreation.gov is, is not, <laughs> it's, it, it has its challenges. Uh, I had the search parameters set to find a site with electricity first and foremost, and it needed to accommodate a 34, 35 foot RV. And somehow when I made, when I booked my site, I ended up with a tent site with no electricity. And yeah, it would hold Trudy, the Super C, but I would have never gotten Trudy level. Now these are the, the tents. These actually come with linens. They have uh, a battery pack with an inverter so that you actually have a coffee maker included. There's a little fan. But anyway, you can jump over to the experiential video in the, in the playlist. The North Carolina 2021 playlist. And you can see the inside of these two. I, I went into both of these yesterday. I was really surprised. I, I didn't know they had that type of accommodation here. And next up, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and cruise through the dump station. The dump station is on a little side road by itself, which was kind of, I thought, an interesting setup. That'll be our next destination. When we were checking in yesterday, the young man at the gate said that there has been a lot of bear activity the last couple weeks. But unfortunately, we have not seen any. Unfortunately, from a videographer's perspective, the Ratty Pack, they're okay with that. They don't like, it. They don't like bears. Three years ago when we were 
out this way. We stayed at Mount Pisgah Campground, and they there were several bears very active in that campground, so much so that they had uh, live traps in two different campsites. And our little rat terriers, they were they were freaking out the whole time we were the, we were there. Uh, they, they they couldn't take care of any business because anytime they were out of the RV, they they felt like prey. Not felt like prey. They felt like they were dinner prey. So that's the dump station. In case you're looking for it, it's on this little side street. Nothing else here. And. It will be very tight if we decided to come down here with Trudy. Cause that today's video is sponsored by campgroundviews.com. Cutting edge technology in trip planning for your RV trip. You want to know what that site's gonna look like? They have got you covered with 360 degree views of every campsite. They currently are focusing on recreation.gov campsite. They have completed all of the West Coast and are in the process of getting all of the East Coast campsites. And then they'll be moving into the central United States. They have an early bird special that I'm taking advantage of. And I recommend that you check it out and, and see if it fits with your budget as well. Because this technology is what we RVers have been dying for. We'll be able to see exactly what the sites look like. No surprises when we get there because of those 360 degree views. So my hat's off to campgroundviews.com. The link is in the description below. I encourage you to go check out what they're doing and see if it's right for you. All right, let's go back to what we were doing. It's a really tight turn I just made. Fortunately, we are in a full connection site. Going back to my mistake on recreation.gov, when we arrived, now I rely on a CPAP machine. I must have electricity and I did not come prepared uh, to be without, I, I have an alternate power source for the CPAP machine, but I didn't bring that because uh, I thought all my campsites had power. Well, I should have brought that alternate power source because we almost ended up in a site without power. But we expressed our problem, or we, we explained our situation to the, the park management, and they said, oh, we got, we'll, we'll take care of you. And they put us in an empty uh, volunteer site, which has full connection. So if you arrive at a campsite and you realize that it's not exactly what you thought it was gonna be, because you, it's really hard to tell on, all, on the, just about every reservation platform I've utilized, it's almost impossible to tell whether you're gonna be able to get a level, if, if your, your rig will actually fit, and sometimes the mistakes happen. So don't be afraid to go up to the front and say, hey, uh, this is not gonna work. Is there something, something else that we can do? Are there any other options for us? And most of the time, well, I'm not gonna say most of them, a lot of the times, campgrounds will hold back two or three sites, just in case a site that is reserved has a problem. Say the power pole goes out or the water goes off they can move those campers into another comparable site. So there's, there's typically at least one site available. And it's happened to, to us twice now where we, uh, we arrive and we've just asked, you know, do you have something? And both national forest campgrounds, by the way. And they said, well, we have empty park host sites that we don't typically uh, put campers in, but under the circumstances, we'll make that exception today. It always helps to say please and thank you. So that was the parking lot for the swim area on the little lake, and you're going to get a, a pretty decent look at the little lake next. So 
the, the little lake is actually Lake Powhatan. And Lake Powhatan, I didn't know this until yesterday, uh, has trout of several different species of trout. Brown trout, rainbow trout, brook trout, bass, and brim or perch, whatever you choose to call them. And they have a really nice, and I'm saying really nice, fishing dock down here next to the dam. And this would be the parking area. If you do not have handicap plates, you can see the sign there on the left. No vehicles without handicap tags beyond this point. The fishing dock is ADA accessible. Now the rest of the park, not so much. Uh, a couple of the bathrooms have got ramps going up to them. The swim area, you're really going to need an off-road, big, big balloon tire type chair, scooter to get down there and it's a pretty pretty steep grade. I think Little Red could do it, but Little Red is dead. And this, this trail right here, the, we're on a trailhead kind of set up here and it is so very popular. Here is the fishing dock. There's the beach and Lake Powhatan. Not very big. All right, let's go look at some camping loops. percent chance of rain today. We've already had a really good shower. So I guess that means it's been a hundred percent for us. Yesterday when we arrived, we arrived here about two o'clock. I drove around uh, visiting the highlights with the camera. And the beach was very busy. There were a lot of people laying out in the sand. Not so many people swimming. I guess the water's cold. For it to support trout, the water's got to be pretty cold. But there were a lot of people on the sand sunbathing. the law, obeying the law. I think the problem with Little Red, some type of sensor module in the hub motor. The, the motor will kind of turn, but it stutters. And that, that will you know, a power tool that would lead me to believe it's the brush but I don't, I don't think there's any brushes in the hub motor if anyone lives watching this video knows anything about hub motors can you tell us whether or not brushes are a part in case you don't know the brush in a motor is the graphite contact where the electricity is transferred from the in supply in to the armature 
and the rotor, the rotor and the stator, all of those parts of an electric motor. Without brushes, the motor does not go around. And brushes do wear out. This is another tent camping loop. All right, there may be a couple of RV sites, RV connection sites in here. Oh, yeah, there. My mistake. That's actually a full connection right there. Kid was screaming yesterday too. Counting. Good that he knows how to count. They have, I think there are four double RV occupancy sites. They're about $75 a night. Alright, I'm gonna make one left-hand turn. Actually, I guess it'll end up being two left-hand turns. This one's not really a left-hand turn. We're just going to go straight across. And then we'll make a left-hand turn coming out of here. But this is another tent camping loop. This is the loop that I ended up booking reservations on. First, this is where I made my mistake. And it, it's not just tent camping. So the, the power and water sites are mixed in, which I think that is how I ended up booking a, a site without power. It was okay without the water. It's actually the next one, 11. So it was this one on the right. And right next to it is one that has power. So, anyway, we got it all sorted out. If at any point when you're making booking reservations at any campground and you don't know whether or not you're going to be able to get into it, it's not a bad idea to give the campground a direct call and ask them for their insight as to you know what what site should should I be looking at with an RV that's 35 feet long. No, they'll be they'll be the best resource. I don't think there's any one loop that's better than the others, uh, but I do. 
But I will say that the first loop that we cruised through, it's not going to be conducive. You know, not, most of the sites up there were not, not really ideal for motor homes unless they're small. The majority of the sites on this loop are water electric. Especially on the inner in, inside of the loop. We're going to loop around again because this is where Trudy Thunder is. This is our campsite right here. But there's more for you to see, so we're going to go around the loop, all the way around the loop again. The beauty of this campground is just, it, it really leaves me speechless. All right, once more around the loop. with sunshine this time. Site number 49. Not a not a bad site at all. Actually pretty pretty nice. A little bit of a trick to get in here because it's such a steep slope up. But once you get to the top, it's 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 pretty level. Alright, and that brings us to the end. Hey, those, those are normally always so this actually even this was this was fun, but not nearly as fun as Little Red. And I'll have I'll have Little Red back on the road soon. But if this is your first visit to Dude RV, hey, I would be honored if you would consider clicking on the subscribe button and please remember to tap that bell as well. That way you'll never miss another episode. And for those of you who have been following along, thank you. That's why I do what I do. That's why I'm here in this beautiful forest. And for my patrons, y'all rock. All right, y'all come back now, you hear?